dividing polynomials using synthetic division. Our objective here is we want to obviously <laughs> use synthetic division to divide polynomials. Now, of course, the first question is, what is synthetic division? Synthetic division is simply a shortcut method of polynomial division that can only be used if the divisor is linear. In other words, if the divisor is in the form x minus c. And I want to note the minus c here. So this is linear because the, the leading exponent is a 1, x to the 1. That means it's a linear divisor. I'm not sure why they call it synthetic. I'm not so sure where the name comes from, but it's an interesting method, again, used only if you're dividing by an x minus a number. Okay, it is generally used for finding the zeros or the roots of polynomials. So how do we do synthetic division? Well, it's done as follows. A lot of steps here. It will certainly help when we do a couple of examples. So to divide a polynomial by x minus a number. Now first, let's, as we need to, let's arrange the polynomial in descending powers in standard form, okay, with a zero for any missing term. We'll do an example of, with a missing term uh, for a second example. Second, in row one, we're going to write the divisor c, and to the right, we're going to write the coefficients of the dividend. Third, we're going to bring the first coefficient down to row three. We're going to have three rows total. Fourth, we're going to multiply c by that first coefficient and write that product in the next column in row two. Fifth, we're going to add the values in that second column and write the sum in row three. And again, I know this sounds like a lot of uh, <laughs> like a lot of hocus pocus. Uh, it will certainly help when we start to when we do an example. Sixth, we're going to repeat the series of multiplication add multiplication add until all the columns are filled in. Okay. We'll use the numbers in row three to write the quotient plus the remainder. Okay, the degree of the first term of the quotient is one less than the degree of the dividend. We'll see that. The final value in row three is the remainder. If that value is zero, then the x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. Okay, a lot of words. Certainly confusing. I know it was for me when I first did this. Let's do a couple of examples and we'll, we'll return to this as we work with it. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep that up there. All right, so example one. Use synthetic division to divide. This is a second degree polynomial. X squared plus 4X minus 21. We want to divide it by this linear divisor X minus 3. And then we want to ask the question, is x minus 3 a factor of x squared plus 4x minus 21? Remember here, if the final value in row 3 is a 0 here, then it's a factor. So we're going to see that. So what do we do first? As necessary, arrange the polynomial in descending powers. Nope, we're done. Okay. Now, in row one, write the divisor C. Notice, okay, this is X minus C. And so we have minuses, which means that C is equal to three. In row one, write C. Okay, so here's my C. I tend to put it with a, kind of a half box. All right, a right half and bottom half of a box. Okay, to the right of this, write the coefficients of the dividend. Here's the dividend. The coefficients are positive 1, positive 4, and negative 21. So I'll put positive 1 here, positive 4 here, and negative 21 here. And again, this is row 1. Okay, so in row 1, write the divisor C. There it is. To the right of that, 
I wrote the coefficients. 1, 4, negative 21 there. Okay, bring the first coefficient down to row 3. So that means I have a row 2 right here. And then I put a line underneath this, and this is going to be row 3. So this helps me to organize myself. I'm going to have three rows. Notice I have these three columns, if you don't include this. Bring the first coefficient down to row 3. There it is. Multiply C by the first coefficient. Here's our C, so we are going to multiply. Okay. Write the product in the next column in row 2. 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, that's the product in the next column in row, th in row 2. Add the values in the column. 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay? And then just repeat. Okay, now we're going to multiply and repeat. Repeat this. So, C times 7. I'll kind of try to do this. Let's see. I'll kind of go like this with an arrow. There's my multiplication. 3 times 7 is 21. I'll write 21 here. Add negative 21 plus 21 is 0. Okay? I'm done. Repeat this series until all columns are filled in. We're done. Okay? Now, first off, we want to notice something. The final value in row 3, this final value is the remainder. So we have a zero remainder, okay? And this, these are the coefficients of the quotient, okay? So the first thing we know, we have a zero remainder. Is x minus 3 a factor? Well, we got a zero remainder, so yes x minus 3 is a factor of the polynomial x squared plus 4x minus 21. We got a zero remainder, so it's a factor. That's how factors and factors work. Okay, now let's write this division out. What we did is we took this, we took x squared plus 4x minus 21, we divided it by x minus 3. Okay, we've seen this before. We've seen how this looks before. And we know this equals the quotient. Well, the coefficients are here and here. Okay, well, our divisor was squared, so our quotient is an x to the first power. So it's x plus 7. Okay, x plus 7 is, and then if you want, we can add our remainder, which is 0, divided by our divisor, which is x minus 3. So this is the quotient. These were the coefficients, a 1 coefficient to the x term, and then a 7, uh, which turns out to be just a constant term, and of course, this is the remainder, which we of course understand as zero because zero divided by anything is zero. So that's the process. It takes a little bit of practice. Don't be rushing to think you should know this the first time. Uh, it is kind of cool how it works and it is kind of quick. It certainly seems to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it's a bit quicker than using the long division. Okay, let's do a second example. Okay, I'm going to change my paper, but I will try to remember to go back and follow my instructions, my steps. Okay, give me a moment to get my act together. Keep my steps handy so we can work with those. Example two, use synthetic division to divide a third-degree polynomial, uh, 5x 
cubed. Let me pull this down just a little bit so I can write something above that. 5x cubed plus 6x plus 8. We're going to divide that by x plus 2. Is x plus 2 a factor of 5x cubed plus 6x plus 8? Okay, step one, arrange the polynomial and descending powers. 3, 1, 0, we're good. With a 0 for any missing term, we're missing the squared term. So we need to include in here plus 0x squared. Okay, we need to have that in there. Uh, notice we're dividing it by an x Okay, let's notice here, we're dividing it by x plus 2. Well, it has to be x minus c. Okay, that's how, we're that's how the formula is done. So that means this is going to be x minus negative 2. So negative 2 is our c. Okay, because it has to be x minus, so we're going to rewrite the plus 2 with a negative 2 so that we can subtract it. And now we know what our C is. Our C is negative 2. Okay, that was step 1. In row 1, write the divisor C. The divisor C is negative 2. And again, I kind of set it apart with a half box. Next to it, to the right, let's write the coefficients of the dividend. 5, 0, 6, 8. 5, 0, 6. 6, 8, and again, this is row 1. We're going to have a row 2, and I'm labeling them to help us, and I draw a line underneath that because we're going to have a row 3. We have three rows for this to work. This is kind of our math row, and this is kind of our answer row, if you will. I don't think I need to have the line go that far. There we go. Okay, so that is... Step two. Step three, bring the first coefficient down to row three. So the five comes down to here. Now we're going to do our process, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add until we're done. So multiply. Negative two times five is negative ten. Put it up here. And then add. 0 plus negative 10 is negative 10. Multiply negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. Put it up here and then add. 6 plus 20 is 26. Continue until all rows, excuse, excuse me, all columns are completed. Negative 2 times 26 is negative 52. Add, we get negative 44. All columns are completed. We have finished the synthetic division. Let's remind ourselves, this part is the remainder. Notice, it's not zero, which means, is x plus 2 a factor? Nope. I didn't get a zero remainder, so it's not a factor. It doesn't go into it evenly. So no, x plus 2 is not a factor of the third degree polynomial 5x cubed plus 6x plus 8. I did not go, it did not go in evenly, which means it did not go in with a zero remainder. So it's not a factor. Okay, now let's write it as a division problem. Remember, this is our quotient. And so let's write this all out. This divided by this. Okay, I'm just going to write that in, di in division language with a fraction bar. 5x cubed plus 6x plus 8 divided by x plus 2. That was the problem. Okay. Well, the quotient has the quotient has coefficients 5, negative 10 and 26 because our dividend had a third power, our quotient starts with a second power. So it's 5x squared, this is the 5 minus 10x here plus 26. Okay, so there's my quotient. 
coming from the bottom here, not including the remainder. Plus, okay, and this is the remainder. Because I have one. Okay, and the remainder is four, negative 44 divided by the dividend, which is 5x cubed plus 6x plus 8. Now, of course, you notice they were adding a negative, so we could, re we could get rid of this here and move this down to here and subtract the remainder. But it's usually quotient plus remainder, quotient plus a negative remainder. Okay, so there you have it, synthetic division with all the little nuances. And again, don't be troubled if it doesn't come to you quickly. It does take a little bit of time to figure out.